One thing I wanted to draw your attention to uh, for the uh, demo of at safe state is that we pulled a little trick here about dynamic layouts that it's nice to have in your toolbox. So I just wanted to go over that with you. <clears throat> if you take a look here at our layout, you'll see a bunch of buttons, this activity button, fragment button, quirk button, this other button. And then there's also this image button that is has wrap content, wrap content, but there's no actual image. And so it's zero length here. However, when we actually look at the lay, at the layout in the phone, there's a there's a button here. There's a, there's an image here. So what happened and how did we achieve this effect? So the answer is in the home fragment. Uh, for to to lay out this button, what we did is we grabbed the button's layout parameters, which uh, when the um, a view was inflated, that button was zero length and zero height and had nothing in it. And we uh, assigned to the width and we assigned to the height. And we want to assign in terms of device independent pixels because that's the way we do our layouts. And you can translate from device independent to device de dependent pixels because these, these uh, values are in device dependent pixels. You can do that using, sorry, it's all the way up here at the top. You can do that using this resources object, which is accessible to you in fragments and in activities. And it's got some information about your screen, particular, uh, in particular, sort of how many device dependent pixels are there for the actual device pixels. So this is how we go from DP to the number of pixels on your screen. Sorry, going, going back here. So we are laying this button out as a 50 by 50 button. And just so you know, you can put other things in here like wrap content, you know, things that, that you put in your XML, you can do programmatically here. So we, we grabbed this layout parameters object, we updated it, we reset it. There's actually even a, you can do this in a single call called update layout params. Uh, then what we did for this button is we set the background to be this uh, object that we drew and uh, we uh, set an image resource uh, um, uh, that's the, the little, the black plus in the middle of it. So what is the circle? The circle is a, a shape. You know, we, we haven't done too much about 2D graphics in this course and we're not going to, but I just wanted to at least let you know that it is possible to draw things like circles and, and squares and shapes. And you might actually want to do this as part of your uh, project. Maybe you have like a maze or something and you want some, some simple objects and, you know, gen dynamically generating simple objects quite, is, is quite simple. So you, know, you can put them in XML and you can access them that way, or you can dynamically generate them using a shape drawable. An oval shape uh, is a generalization of a circle. You have to give it some intrinsic height and width because these are equal, it's a circle. That's the important part. The actual width on your screen is dependent on the layout parameters. It's not dependent on the intrinsic uh, height and width. We actually uh, name it a particular color. And this is just another trick of how do you get colors from your, your current application style? There's just this little context compat object, which is a global object. And you created this object and we take this object and we put it uh, in the background of the button. And you know, at the end, at the end of the day, uh, our um, color, our accent color is this fuchsia color, and then we overlay it on top of it as the little black plus and that, that gives us our image button and we set an on-click listener to that image button. And so even though it doesn't show up in the preview, it does show up because we dynamically change the layout uh, at runtime. Okay, thanks.